Today I'm sitting with Milam Lefevre. Uh, we're in his study here in Dallas, Texas, talking about doing some books and getting everything that God's put in uh, Brother Milam's heart for the past million years since you were a rock and roll dude and still are rocking. And this time you're rocking for Jesus. Yes, sir. So you know what I want to know? You were telling me some pretty incredible stuff. Milan Lefevre BC hmm. said you didn't like yourself very well, didn't trust yourself very well. What was what was that all about? I mean, people look at guys like you, they look at the rock and roll scene and they're idolized. Everybody loves rockers. But you didn't love yourself and you were a rocker. Well, you know, God is love and I, I, I believe until you... Um until you really experience love, until you experience the Lord, I don't think you know how to love. I don't think it, if you don't love God, I don't think you can learn how to love anybody else. And you know, people throw that word around. Uh, I, I saw a magazine one time on an airplane. Remember when they used to put magazines on airplanes? And it was the love issue. It was a People magazine. It's like a yearly big, big thing. And it was all the rockers and the and the movie stars and the TV stars that were had quote unquote fallen in and out of love that year, and I picked a magazine up and I heard the Spirit of the Lord say, uh, "I have nothing to do with that. These people are not falling in out of love. They're falling in out of bed. It has nothing to do with me." Wow. And and I realized that I had spent the first half of my life. I'm 65 now. The first 35 years of my life, I was a religious guy. My granddad was a preacher. My parents were gospel singers. Went to church every time the door opened when I was a kid because my daddy was a big guy and he'd just basically kill you. <laughs> you get in the car, you live. You don't go to church, you die. I, mean, there's nothing. I wasn't going because I loved Jesus. I was going because I was afraid of my daddy. But I was thinking the whole time, one of these days I'm going to be big as my daddy. Nobody's going to ever tell me what to do again. And when I, I joined the Army as soon as I got out of high school with that thought in mind and while I was in the army uh, you know trying to learn how to be a man Elvis cut one of my songs I was 17 and uh, I was making $84 a month as a private in 1962 that's what they paid privates mm -hmm. and uh, Elvis wouldn't let the colonel if you go back and look at that How Great Thou Art album most of those songs are Elvis Presley music publishing but he told the colonel, don't take the kids Wait a minute, who's, the, who's the colonel? Colonel Tom Parker, his manager. Oh, okay. And so the colonel didn't take my publishing, and he let me start a little publishing company. Well, that was pretty awesome of Elvis, wasn't it? But paid for this house. Wow. I, and I didn't know what publishing was. I thought you wrote songs and you sung them, you know. And in those days, you got to remember, a 17-year-old kid, the only person who listened to my songs was my mama. <laughs> Everybody else made fun of me. You think you can write songs? Yeah, right. And you, you write things, when you grow up in Georgia and you're a kid, you write things that rhyme, mm -hmm. and the other guys find out about it, you're going to get in a fight. <laughs> That's right. You know what I mean? That ain't, but once Elvis cut one of my songs, it gave me credibility. Uh -huh. All of a sudden, I was a songwriter instead of a, a dreamer with pimples on his nose. and you know. So, so that song paid for this house. Yeah. And folks, this this is not a double wide. Thank you, Jesus. I just wanted people to know this wasn't a double wide. But he you know, the the point I was trying to make is this. I believe that I grew up in religion and when I left when I left my family and I left the church and I took the money from the Elvis cut, eventually started a little band that later on became the nucleus of the Atlanta rhythm section. And uh, I got out there and made some records, and, and some of the musicians that I traveled with who were big stars started to like my music, and they had, I'd record on their records, or we'd write songs together. That's what musicians do, they jam, you know. 
And over the per a period of years, a couple of the Beatles, one of the Rolling Stones, uh, you know, people like Little Richard and Clapton and you know, lots of people recorded. And I went out there trying to please those people, my musical heroes, because I wanted to be like them. I didn't want to be like Jesus because I didn't know you could. I didn't know it was a possibility. I just knew you could be religious. And, and I didn't see the goodness of God in that. I didn't see an enjoyable lifestyle. I just didn't understand. So I wasted a lot of years in rock and roll and a lot of years, you know, all my heroes were into herbs and spices, so I eventually got strung out too. But I came to Jesus at a, at a second chapter of Acts concert in 1980, and I, I, I asked God to forgive me for trying to be the Lord of my own life that night. And I accepted Jesus not just as my Savior and the Son of God, but I received Jesus mm -hmm. as my Lord and Master. And I decided I'm going to submit to him. I'm going to read the only book he wrote. And I'm going to do what it says by the grace of God. How did, you end, up in a, how did you end up at the second chapter of Acts? Buck Herring had been a rascal. His, you know, his wife was, the, the girls, there were two girls and a brother, Matt and Nellie and Annie Herring. And Buck Herring was Annie's uh, husband. And he, he was a DJ. He produced... I Am Woman by Helen Reddy. I mean, he's been around a long time. Mm -hmm. And he was a rascal. He was one of my rascal buddies, you know. And he got born again. And he wasn't, you know, he had a couple feet of hair and he didn't preach at you. Next time I saw him, I offered him some cocaine. He didn't want any. And I thought, are you crazy? Free cocaine? You don't want any? He, he didn't preach to me. He just said, I found something better. Wow. He said, I found what I was looking for. Wow. And, uh, and, of course, that made me interested. I started asking him about it, and he started telling me about Jesus. Oh, you probably thought he found a better drug? In the beginning, I wasn't sure what it was. But, you know, he is, he was, and he was in love with Jesus, and he led me to the Lord wow. at that concert. And uh, I've never taken another drug since that day, and I was a heroin addict. I, I went in and out, stone to the bone. I went to that concert, whacked. I was faced, man, and I walked out of there, and I never had withdrawals. It was a Saturday night concert. I got born again. I got filled with the Holy Spirit. I went to church. I stayed up all night. I was the first guy in church the next morning, sat on the front row. I didn't have any suits and ties. I had about three feet of hair and earrings, so it freaked out some folks at church. But me and Jesus had a good time, and it's been getting better every day since That's then. That's awesome. Hey, you keep watching because we're going to do another video here. Uh, in just a minute.